Hello higher historians and welcome to your next lesson on the Vietnam War. So this is issue number four, looking at the war in Vietnam. Now this presentation is going to give you more background to the war in Vietnam just so you know what went on and why America gets involved in the war in Vietnam. You don't need to know much of this background for your essay, just effectively some information that you could use in the background in your introduction, but it's just good for you to be able to know why America got involved and to set the scene. So the factors that we are going to cover in this essay are the following factors. So we're looking at why the USA lost the war in Vietnam, that's what this issue is all about. So we're going to focus on difficulties faced by US military, the strengths of North Vietnam, the weaknesses of South Vietnam, changing public opinion in the USA and the international isolation of the USA. Now this presentation isn't going to start looking at any of these factors today, this presentation is just going to focus more on background, then the next presentation will look more at each factor in turn. Now to start with, we're going to do a quick quiz on the war in Vietnam, just to see what you already know. Obviously this isn't in class, but you can do this at home just to see what your knowledge is like of the Vietnam War so far. So let's see how much you know before we start. So firstly, which country fought a war in Vietnam just before the United States? So A, England, B, Germany, C, Japan, or D, France. And it's up to you if you just want to try these yourself or you want to write down the answers in your jot or it's entirely up to you. But we go over the answer after each question. So your answer to question one is France. Question two, which of the following countries is not located in Southeast Asia? Cambodia, China, Laos, or Vietnam? The answer to that is China. Question three, who was the Vietnamese nationalist that became the leader of North Vietnam and the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War? So who led North Vietnam and the Viet Cong? They're the enemy of the United States during the Vietnam War. So was it Mao, Tu Tong, Ho Chi Minh, or Ngo Dinh Diem? Well, the leader of North Vietnam and the Viet Cong was Ho Chi Minh, who we'll find out more about. Who was president in 1955 when the US began acting as an advisor to the government and military of South Vietnam? Was it Harry S. Truman, Dwight D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy or Richard M. Nixon? It was Dwight D. Eisenhower. What Cold War theory was used by leaders of the US government to justify their involvement in Vietnam? So was it the Red Menace theory, the Iron Curtain theory, the House of Cards theory or the Domino theory? As that was a domino theory which we'll discuss as well. What type of warfare did the Viet Cong use against US forces during the Vietnam War? Germ warfare, chemical warfare, guerrilla warfare or tank warfare? It was guerrilla warfare which again we'll look at. How best would you describe the climate and geography of Vietnam? So cold, dry and flat, dry, barren and desert like, wet, humid and mountainous. Sea, wet, humid and mountainous. Which part of Vietnam was controlled by the US and used as its military base of operations? North Vietnam, East Vietnam, West Vietnam or South Vietnam? That is South Vietnam. So that was just a short quiz there to see what you already knew. Now, as I said, this is just battering to the war in Vietnam because there is a lot of battering to the war. Now, you only really need to know a wee bit of this for using it in your introduction for your essay. We do have a task that we will complete, but I'm just going to talk you through the battering to the war um, just now, just to paint the picture and help you to understand what was actually going on at this time. So what we're looking to do by the end of this lesson today is to be able to explain the origins of the Vietnam conflict, why it actually takes place, and why the USA actually gets involved in the Vietnam War as well. So firstly, where is Vietnam? If you look at the map of the world here, well Vietnam is actually located just there in Southeast Asia. And this is Vietnam closer up, so you can see it's right on the coast of the South China Sea, um, almost in the shape of an S. Um, the country itself, a very, very long country, split, as you'll find out, between North and South during the war. Now, in the Vietnam War itself, 58,000 Americans died in this war, so a lot of American soldiers were killed fighting in the Vietnam War. 
Around a million Vietnamese soldiers died in this war. And between 2 and 4 million Vietnamese civilians were also killed during this war as well. As you can see with the map on the left hand side, where it says 1954 partition line, that divided North Vietnam and South Vietnam, so you can see it's split into two there. Ultimately, if you look closely at the countries that surround Vietnam, like Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, China, they're all very important as to why the US gets involved. The red shaded areas are the areas of major Viet Cong activity, so where the Viet Cong fight against the American troops, especially in those areas. So, we are thinking about why was there so many Americans killed, why were so many Vietnamese soldiers killed, why were so many Vietnamese civilians killed, why did this war happen, why did America get involved? So the Vietnam War lasts from 1959 to 1975, so it's a very, very long conflict that America has drawn into. Now in 1954, as I mentioned, Vietnam was divided into two, so we've got North and South Vietnam. Now North Vietnam becomes communist, whereas South Vietnam is a democracy, democracy, so it's capitalist at this time. Now, from what you've learned about the Cold War already, if you think about who would support who, so who would support North Vietnam? Well, that was obviously the Soviet Union, that was Russia. And who would support South Vietnam? Well, that was the USA. So, here we have a country divided into two, into North and South, with clear allies on either side. So, North supported by the Soviet Union and the South supported by the USA. Now, who is fighting in the Vietnam War? So you have the USA and South Vietnam on one side versus North Vietnam and the Viet Cong on the other. Now the Viet Cong, as we'll find out about, are effectively North Vietnamese civilians, but the Viet Cong are a guerrilla group who especially fight against the US troops. Now, you may be thinking, who are the Viet Cong? As I mentioned, they're, they're a communist terrorist group who are working in South Vietnam in particular. Okay, so they're set up there to attack American troops. They use a form of guerrilla warfare, which we'll discuss more about as well, and they're very, very difficult to fight against. Now, who do you think won the war? Well, I will already revealed this with what this issue is all about. It was North Vietnam that wins this war. Okay, America loses the war in Vietnam. So we're looking at this issue at why that was the case. So, the big question, how did the war actually start? Now, the origins of the conflict. Now, Vietnam had actually been part of the colonial empire established by France in the 19th century, and it was actually known then as Indochina. Now, Indochina became part of Japan's sphere of influence, with military bases being established there as well. And at this time, a strong anti-Japanese movement emerged called the Viet Minh. Now, they were under the leadership of the communist Ho Chi Minh, who used to be a teacher. And that is Ho Chi Minh there. Now, in 1945, Japan surrendered and their forces left Indochina. Now, Ho Chi Minh proclaimed independence at this point. However, France had other ideas as they planned to re-establish the colonial empire they had lost in 1940. So, by 1949, communists had taken over China as we know, and now the US saw the Viet Minh as the puppets of Mao in China. So, they saw uh, Vietnam almost like a puppet state for China, and they feared the communist plan to dominate all of Southeast Asia. Now, the US poured support uh, for the French with $3 billion of financial aid to try and make sure that the French captured Vietnam. However, the French forces were unable to counter the guerrilla tactics of the Viet Minh because they staged a lot of ambushes and they avoided any major battles with the French. Now this led to the 1954 Geneva Agreement. Now, France agreed to leave Indochina at this point and four new countries were then created. So you had Cambodia, Laos, North Vietnam and South Vietnam. Now, as we've discussed already, Vietnam is split into two, the North being communist and South being a democracy, so being capitalist. And there's a demilitarised zone between the two sides. Now, elections would be held in the two Vietnams to see if the country could be unified. This was all agreed. Ultimately though, a new nation in the South is established. So in 1955, with the help of massive amounts of American military, political and economic aid, the government of the South... Uh, Vietnam was born, the Republic of Vietnam, as it was known. And the following year, Ingo Dinh Diem, who we'll find out about as well, he's a staunch anti-communist figure from the South. He's elected and became president of South Vietnam. So this is the situation we have now here. So we've got North and South Vietnam split into two. 
The arrows on this map here, which we'll be discussing in more detail when we look at the factors. The red arrows show the Ho Chi Minh Trail, so the Viet Cong actually set up the Ho Chi Minh Trail that went through parts of Cambodia to supply weapons to different parts of South Vietnam for the Viet Cong to use. And you've got the blue arrows there, US and South Vietnamese offences uh, pushing back. Okay, now in the late 1950s, there was a lot of opposition to the government of President Diem, and that opposition steadily increased. Government officials were murdered in the south, his troops were attacked and wealthy landowners were actually killed in the south. But Diem's forces responded with equal violence. And a civil war was now taking place in Vietnam. It was a very cruel civil war, it was a very brutal civil war and it was becoming increasingly bitter. Now in 1960, a new organisation was formed to unite the opposition to Diem with the formation of the National Liberation Front or the NLF as they became known, and they were heavily backed by North Vietnam. Now, the NLF was dominated and controlled by communists, and the NLF was also given another and more familiar name, which was the Viet Cong. So now we have the NLF, but better known as the Viet Cong, fighting against President Diem and his troops. So that is the origins to the Vietnam War, in terms of why it's taken place. So we have obviously in the South, President Diem, who's a very brutal leader in the South, he's not very popular, so we have an uprising here against Diem, and war is about to start. So, the question is why do the US get involved in this war? Now, how did the war actually officially begin? Now, with the Cold War intensifying quite a bit, the US hardened its policies against any allies of the Soviet Union. And by 1955, President Eisenhower, as you could see here in the picture, shaking the hands with President Diem of South Vietnam, he pledged his firm support to Diem and South Vietnam. He said, we will back you and we will support you. Now, with training and equipment from American military and police, Diem security forces cracked down on communist sympathisers in the South, and some 100,000 people were actually arrested in South Vietnam, many of whom were then tortured and executed. Now, by 1957, the Viet Cong and other opponents of Diem's repressive regime began fighting back again, with attacks on government officials and other ta targets as well. And by 1959, they had been engaging South Vietnamese army forces in firefights. So ultimately, it was tit for tat, back and forth, fighting against Diem and his troops. So it was a very, very hostile situation in South Vietnam. Now in December 1960, Diem's opponents within South Vietnam, both communist and non-communist, who were also <coughs> um, his enemies as well now, had formed the National Liberation Front, as we've discussed, also known as the Viet Cong, to organise resistance to the regime. Now, though the National Liberation Front claimed to be independent and claimed that most of its members were actually non-communist fighting against Diem, many in Washington and USA assumed it was a puppet of North Vietnam to try and ultimately break down Diem's government in the South and to try and unify the country. Now, a team sent by President JFK in 1961, so John F. Kennedy is now in power, to report on conditions in South Vietnam, advised the build-up of American military, economic and technical aid in order to help confront the Viet Cong threat. So they went there and they saw that there was a threat from the Viet Cong, so they recommended that American military, economic and technical aid be upped, ultimately. Now, working under the domino theory, Kennedy increased US aid. Now, though he stopped short of committing to a large-scale military intervention, he did commit to giving more aid. Now, this is also a big unanswered question in history because John F. Kennedy ends up being assassinated. He only ever sends troops as advisors to Vietnam. He never escalates conflict there. So had John F. Kennedy not been assassinated, we may never have had the Vietnam War. He may have taken a different tact. But it's his predecessor, Lyndon Johnson, that really ups the ante in Vietnam. Now, he's working under the domino theory. The domino theory, as I'll show you a picture in a moment, is the theory that if Vietnam falls to communism, if the whole Vietnam falls to communism, then other countries in Asia will also fall to communism, just like a row of dominoes being knocked over. So, why the US gets involved, the way we recognise that is through the domino theory, as I've just discussed there. This image shows you perfectly how the domino theory was working in the minds of America's politicians and lawmakers at this time. So you've got the Viet Cong on the right-hand side there, pushing over Vietnam, so almost like the communists are claiming Vietnam, and then you've got other dominoes there, so you've got Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, Burma, India, Bangladesh. At the end, they're supposed to be an American troop trying to hold up the row of dominoes. So the idea is if Vietnam falls to communism, then all those other countries will also fall to communism as well, which is a massive 
worry for the Americans. So that's why they decide to get involved in Vietnam. As I mentioned, John F. Kennedy sends more aid. He does send troops to advise in Vietnam, but it's really his predecessor, Lyndon B. Johnson, that ups the ante and sends in troops to actually confront the Viet Cong. So from 1964 to 1968, the United States built up massive resources in men and materials in South Vietnam. Now initially, Johnson has strong support from the American people who are sympathetic to his belief in checking the advance of communism, so they were supporting him. And it was assumed that America's technologically perf uh, powerful armed forces would enable them to easily defeat the Viet Cong and their North Vietnamese allies. It was seen to be an easy war to win, or so it appeared. However, it, this was not to be the case. As we'll find out, it was a very long war, it was a very difficult war, and in the end, America is not victorious. Okay, so your activity for this lesson is just to make up a quick fat file for both leaders from either uh, side that's fighting in this war. So, make up a quick fat file on Ho Chi Minh, who is Prime Minister of North Vietnam. So you're looking to include a picture in your jotter of Ho Chi Minh if you can, even if it's just a sketch, that would be fine. And underneath it, just make sure you include the information of his full name, the years that he was leader, a quick synopsis of his career before becoming Prime Minister of North Vietnam and his political beliefs. Remember, he is a staunch communist. And then... Complete a similar task to the one above on Lyndon B. Johnson, who is President of the US. So again, include a picture in your jot of this. And underneath that, if you include his full name, years as leader, a quick synopsis of his career and his political beliefs as well. Now this was also just battering to the war in Vietnam on this issue. So again, this is just useful for you when it comes to your introduction, which also we'll discuss when we're doing your essay. But this is just an introduction to the war in Vietnam. If you have any questions at all, just ask myself or Mrs. Forty. Thank you very much.